I've been hunting forever for a gentle science program to do with my kids, and I think I found the perfect one. If you would like a fun outdoors science program that you can do with your kids this summer, stay tuned for all the details. I've got it for you right after this. You are? What are you planting right now? Uh, carrots and vegetables. All kinds of stuff. Cool. You putting those seeds in there? Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Amanda Radke's Reading Corner. I'm Amanda, a cattle rancher from South Dakota, the author of seven children's books and a homeschool mom of four. And today I'm going to do my first homeschool curriculum review. I have watched thousands, probably hundreds at least, videos of moms doing homeschool curriculum reviews, which have helped me immensely in making decisions on what I would teach my own kids on programs and how they're laid out and what the lessons are like. And so I'm very grateful to the moms who have taken time to do that to help me avoid costly mistakes in buying curriculum that doesn't make sense for my family and to help me make purchasing decisions for programs that do work for my family. We are in our second year of homeschooling. We started at the beginning of the pandemic and it was an accidental thing. We didn't intend to do that. And then we discovered that we really loved it and we found so many great blessings to be able to have our kids at home with us on the ranch and to be able to learn and do life together and disciple them and teach them about all of the subjects, reading and math and science and literature and social studies and history through the lens of a biblical worldview. And so it's been an incredible blessing for our family. So with that, I'm going to do my first curriculum review on something that we have really enjoyed. I had been on the hunt forever for a science program that I could do, not just with my rising second grader, but also with my little boys who are going to be kindergarten and then two in preschool. And so I wanted something to be like a family unit style that we could all learn together and do. And I landed on the Good and the Beautiful's new course, Science for Little Hearts and Hands, Fields and Flowers Parent Guide. Uh, so here's the parent guide that I received. This is the what I read from to the kids. And this program can, comes with another book, which is the big book of science stories. And so I'm just going to kind of show you what this unit is like. Um, it's one of those things where I think we could do again and again and go over it and kind of flow with the seasons. So that's been really neat. Uh, but one of our first lessons that we did was on worms. And so I'll show you the worm pages. I was actually planting in the garden. And so I said, let's grab the good and the beautiful science, go out to the garden. And I had them start digging in the soil for worms while I was reading the story. And so it's a really cool thing. Um, this actually has the kids doing it in the living room and piling pillows and comforters and blankets um, and then wriggling through them like worms. So I just had them wiggle outside in the grass because we were doing it on the go. And that's the thing, you adapt these lessons to fit you. Um, but you can see there's really beautiful illustrations in there. And then there's a little reading section that you do to the kids and then it directs you to story time. And so here it says, today we're going to read a story about a homeschool group that is learning about earthworms. You are going to learn about what earthworms look like, what they do and why they're important to nature. And then it directs you to put this parent guide down and to grab your big book of science stories and flip to the page about wiggly worms. And so I open up the book and there's this really cute story about wiggly worms. And this class is, you know, out in nature exploring and the teacher is teaching them about all things worms. And within the story, you know, it's just, it's, it, it incorporates lots of fun facts about worms that my kids have picked up on and remembered. Like, did you know that worms have five hearts? Or if you look closely, their skin is so translucent that you can see their blood pumping and that they breathe through their skin. It teaches them what the earthworms eat and why they are important to the environment. And so 
this was really neat. And here's a picture of the earthworm's hearts, you know, the lines that you can see in that worm. And they really ate up this story and it captured the attention of my kids who are ages seven, five, four, and three. And so pretty much a miracle that I could keep all of their attention for this lesson. And so the, the book is about, oh, six pages long. Um, so really short and sweet with lots of facts in there about worms. Then we close the book and we go back to our teacher guide. So they have that story and they're really engaged. And it was really cute because while we were reading the story, they were all holding little earthworms that they had dug up in the soil. And then you go back to this page with discussion points. So question, Jenny thought worms were gross. What do you think about worms? Do you love to dig them up and hold them or do worms make your skin crawl? And I let all the kids take turns answering. And that's a really good thing for us to practice with the kids is everyone gets a turn. We have to listen politely while someone else is talking. And so, you know, they get so eager to answer the questions that uh, they just jump on it. And so there's four questions here. And then at the bottom, there's an optional activity encouraging the kids to continue building on their worm tunnels in the living room and really engaging and play that way. Um, but really short and simple lesson, like that's it for one lesson. Now the lessons cover a wide variety of topics, you know, pretty superficial level, but again, this is geared towards a sec a preschool to second graders. So you could even do this with little ones. Um, but there's, let's see, there's several different um, lessons here. You learn about trees, tree bark, tree sap and syrup, mushrooms and moss, wildflowers, seeds, garden flowers, desert plants, plants that eat, edible plants, butterflies, honeybees, ants, snails and slugs, mosquitoes, beetles, worms, crustaceans, snakes, grasshoppers and crickets, lizards, ladybugs, dragonflies, fireflies, frogs, fish, and water plants. Of course, The Good and the Beautiful also has a recommended book list that you can purchase uh, with this unit that would add to it, but you could also just go to the library and grab books. So you could grab a half a dozen books on worms and, and you know, add to the lesson and, you know, that could be your theme of the week. Then you could have kids you know, cutting out worms with construction paper or making that really cute dessert with the pudding and then the crumbled up Oreos on top with the gummy worms. And so you could really kind of bring it to life um, with just very little planning. So um, like I said, this isn't as in-depth of some other science units that I've checked out. Scarlett had previously done the Good and the Beautiful's Mammoth, Mammoth Mammals unit. Um, so on all animals, which she loves, but it was way too high level for my son who was in preschool and the little boys. And so again, while it was really cool for her, we couldn't do it family style. And so highly recommend the Good and the Beautiful's Science for Little Hearts and Hands unit. Check it out. And the really cool thing is I was able to incorporate one of my children's books into our further learning. And that book is the soil quilt. So I wrote this book. It talks about the five principles of soil health. So since we were learning about earthworms and how they feed the soil, I thought it was a perfect way to incorporate the lessons in this book. And so you can see the little boy, he's peeking at the soil and oh, there's even a couple worms in the soil there. And so they really grasped that and were able to um, jump right into this story and start learning new concepts. And the fact that we are gardening right now, and then the little boy in the story is out in the garden with his grandma, was a perfect tie-in. Uh, so I'm going to provide the links to not only the Good and the Beautiful unit that is now available and is brand new out this summer. And I would recommend you could, even if you're not homeschooling, by the way, you could do this with your kids. It takes, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes for a lesson. And you could do this with uh, your kids all summer long to kind of keep them in learning mode during the summer months. But uh, for a homeschool curriculum for my kids, we're going to do this year round and revisit different topics uh, through different times of years, like or of the year, like when the trees hibernate, you know, and, and the leaves fall off. And so you could visit in the fall and you could revisit the tree subject again in the winter. Um, so really fun. I think we're going to get a lot of use out of this curriculum. And that's saying something because I've bought 
a lot of curriculum that uh, hasn't worked out so well or that we've put to the side because it just hasn't been the right fit or my kids aren't quite mature enough to really grasp the concepts. So I'll provide the links to this one from the good and the beautiful. I will also drop the link for the soil quilt, which was written by myself and illustrated by Michelle Weber. I hope these things uh, prove useful to you. I hope this review was helpful. If you are a mom looking for curriculum reviews, I would encourage you to stick around because I'm going to be doing more of them talking about some of the programs that have worked really well for us, the ones that we've fallen in love with. And I do plan to share what we plan to do for the 2022-2023 school year very soon where I will have a rising second grader, kindergartner, and two in preschool. And so there's a lot of ground to cover. If this interests you, be sure to like, comment, and share this video with others to help me spread the word. And also I would invite you to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Amanda Radke's Reading Corner. I'm Amanda Radke, joining you from my ranch in South Dakota. Have a great day.